Persuasion is the process of motivating someone through communication and relationship building to change a particular attitude, belief, value, or behavior. Before we examine the characteristics implicit in this thing we call persuasion, it might be useful to know that we have a lot of earlier work to start with and build off of. In fact, the study of persuasion is one of the oldest intellectual endeavors in human history, going back to the ancient Greeks, to the great city of Athens. The Athenians had highly developed systems of law. On a daily basis, average citizens found themselves embroiled in lawsuits, having to convince a judge or jury of the rightness of their case. Before long, rhetoric, the art of public persuasion, became an indispensable skill, and citizens started expressing a desire to be trained in ways of crafting convincing arguments. A group of thinkers called sophists met this demand by holding seminars and teaching their clients how to be more successful in court. They devised techniques and taught them to paying students who suddenly found themselves able to win court cases, sometimes even when they were most obviously in the wrong. For sophists and their students, it didn't matter if the argument was flawed so long as it won immediate approval. The philosopher Plato disagreed with this endeavor. Because Plato valued truth above all else, he looked down on the sophists and their methods for sacrificing truth at the altar of persuasion, for being not interested in discovering truth or advancing rational, laboriously painstaking arguments, and preferred quick, neat, and stylish argument. Though considered the first scientist of persuasion, Plato's own contribution to the study of persuasion was perhaps that he inspired his student, Aristotle, to follow in his intellectual footsteps. Aristotle's own great insight was that both Plato and the sophists had a point. Plato was right about the importance of truth, and the sophists were correct that persuasive communication is a very useful tool. Aristotle, to some degree, took the best of both schools of thought, arguing that rhetoric is not designed to persuade people, but to discover the scientific principles and characteristics of persuasion. Things get better in the mountain, if we could drop back down.